Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's take a look at this next transform pair. In the last video, what we saw was that when we took the Fourier transform of the function that was an impulse function, t minus t, or the delta impulse function, t minus t sub naught, then we got the result e to the minus j omega t. So we can conclude that the input function is the delta function or the impulse function, then the Fourier transform will be equal to this. Now we're going to reverse it. What if the input function was equal to e to the i omega t? What will then be the Fourier transform? So here we're going to do something that at first may look a little bit wacky, a little bit magical, but actually it's pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is as follows. We're going to say that, yes indeed, the Fourier transform and the input function, they are transform pairs. We can transform back and forth. And so what we're going to assume is that if the input function is e to the i omega t, then the Fourier transform should take some form of the delta function, the impulse function. But in this case, of course, instead of being in the time domain, we will be in the frequency domain. So the logic is that if we took the Fourier transform of an impulse function, we got this as a result for the Fourier transform. So if the input function is equal to this, which is basically the result that we got there, then the Fourier transform should go back to something that looks like this. All right, so stick with me for a moment. So now what we're going to do is find the solution when we have this as an input function. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to reverse ourselves. We're going to take the inverse transform. So we're going to find the function in the time domain by plugging in the assumed solution. So we're going to put this value in for the assumed solution. If we're going to take the Fourier transform of this function when it's equal to this, so now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to find the function in the time domain by doing the inverse Fourier transform, which is one over two pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the Fourier transform in the frequency domain times e to the j omega t. So when we do that, it looks like this. We can pull the 1 over 2 pi out, so that's out. We're going to plug in the delta function, the assumed solution, not the exact solution, but the assumed solution. And when we do that, we get this as a result, 1 over 2 pi times e to the i omega sub naught t. All right, which means that the Fourier transform of this function not the one that we started with, but the Fourier transform of this function is equal to this delta function. If that's true, then all we have to do is move the 2 pi over, and then we can say that if we multiply both sides by 2 pi, so now that we get e to i omega sub naught t, then the Fourier transform of this function must be equal to this times 2 pi, and that's then the solution to what we're looking for. So in other words, if you're trying to find the Fourier transform of this function right here, the result will be 2 pi times the delta function of omega minus omega sub naught. So, even though it's not straightforward, it does give us the correct result, and so now we can go back and forth. If we're given the, Fourier, if we're given the input function to be the delta function and the impulse function, we can find the Fourier transform to look like this, and if the input function is equal to this, then the Fourier transform will be equal to this. And that's how it's done.